everybody and welcome to this week's State by State presented by the Clinton Public Library featuring me, Cassie, as your host. Uh, this week our chosen state is Florida. Florida became a state in March 3rd, 1845, making it the 27th uh, state admitted to the Union. Its capital is Tallahassee. Florida takes up a total area of about 65,750 square miles. That makes it the 22nd largest state. The highest elevation is Britain Hill, which is the it which is 345 feet above sea level, which makes it the lowest highest point for any state in the US. This is the state flag of Florida. It has gone through several different designs. Uh, the current design uh, was uh, taken and adopted in May of 1985. The flag consists of a red cell tire on a white background with the state seal superimposed in the center. Florida has flown several versions of this flag ranging from uh, one that lasted for 85 years, from uh, the 19, 1900 to 1985, to uh, the um, one that was just the seal of Florida on a white background. And also, uh, let's see, there's one that lasted for about seven years, and another one that lasted a single year, but basically Florida has had a lot of flags, but this is the current accepted flag. Okay, so now we move on to the state flower, and the state flower is the orange blossom, which makes sense considering that California is one of the most, is one of the major producers of oranges in the United States. Uh, the type grown in Florida is most likely the citrus sinensis, which is the sweet orange. Moving on to bits about the flower, the flower or blossom tends to be a white in color with four petals. In the Victorian language of flowers, orange blossoms could mean two things. Your purity equals your loveliness and chastity and bright often and used in bridal festivities. So kind of a similar theme. Now Florida has two specific state foods, one of which I've already mentioned, the orange, but the other one is a little bit more special. Key lime pie. Uh, generally uh, it is uh, it's associated with Key West and is generally made with key lime juice, egg yolks, and sweetened condensed milk. It may be served with no topping, or maybe it'll have a meringue on top, or it'll have whipped cream, and it may be cooked in like a pie crust, a graham cracker crust. I've also seen oatmeal crusts. It's a very versatile pie. Now, for a true key lime pie, they need to be real key limes which tend to be uh, more tart and uh, have a better smell than the more commonly seen limes we see in the uh, grocery stores. In 1965, Florida State Representative Bernie Palpy Jr. introduced a geographical indication legislation calling for a $100 fine to be levied against anyone advertising key lime pie not made with key limes. The bill failed. The key lime pie was designated as the f official Florida state pie in July of 2006. Okay, so Florida has a lot of really unique wildlife. Because of that, they have a lot of different specific state animals, ranging from the state mammal to the state freshwater mammal to the state, saltwater mammal, it, it, and same with reptiles, it gets very complicated, so I just chose my two favorites. Uh, the first one is the Florida panther. 
uh, also called the puma or cougar. Uh, this is a specific subspecies that lives in only lives in South Florida. They are considered endangered. Florida panthers, when they're born, are spotted and typically have blue eyes. As they grow, the spots fade and the coats begin become a, a complete tan, except on the uh, stomach sometimes it can be a creamy white, and black tips on the ears and tail. Florida panthers lack the ability to roar. Instead, they make uh, sounds that include whistles, chirps, growls, hisses, and purrs. Uh, they're about average size when compared to other cougars. Uh, they're smaller than the one than the cougars that come from colder climates, but they're larger than the ones from the more tropical areas. A an adult female uh, can weigh up to a hundred pounds, where the males can typically tend to go up to about one hundred and sixty. They're a they can be anywhere from six feet to seven feet long, and they are about 24 to 28 inches tall in the shoulder. As I said, this is a critically endangered species. Uh, there are recovery efforts currently underway in Florida to conserve the state's remaining population of native panthers. And this is difficult because panthers require a very large area of continuous of contiguous habitat. Each uh, breeding unit, one male and uh, two to five females, requires about 200 square miles of habitat. There's also the points where the uh, cougars and humans meet, and those can usually end very badly for the cougar. So try and uh, Keep an eye out for those panthers if you ever go down to southern Florida. They might not be there in the future. Okay, the uh, state reptile is the American alligator, usually just referred to as a gator. Now these can get big. Basically the older an alligator is, the bigger it is. There have been record alligator kills that have been up to 19 feet. That would have, that would mean the gator oh, would weigh about oh, 2,000, 2,500 pounds. Now, most of the time, alligators don't reach that size. Most uh, mature males of the species tend to grow up to be about 11 feet. Uh, and weigh up to about 800 pounds, while females uh, are considered mature at about eight and a half feet, and with a body weight of about 200 pounds. American alligators can be uh, olive, brown, gray, or black on the top. On average, they are the most darkly colored modern crocodilians. And it can be distinguished by color via their more blackish scales against a crocodile's more sandy kind of color. However, there are occasionally the extremely rare albino alligators, and those can typically only survive in uh, captivity because otherwise they would get predated, eaten by other animals, uh, when they are still very, very tiny gators. Interesting fact about the American alligator, uh, it has very strong closing muscles for its jaw, uh, which can get up to uh, about 2,000, 3,000 pounds of force. But once those jaws are closed, uh, the average woman could hold them in place by hand and then, or use just tape. So strong bite down, not so much on the open. At one time, the American alligator was considered endangered, but due to uh, being protected by the government, uh, it's now gone back up to no longer threatened. They're pretty considered pretty common. Um, in fact, alligators are hunted today uh, with their products uh, being kept watch over by uh, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services, as well as other state agencies, to make sure that nothing untoward is happening.
The American alligator can also survive in um, icy temperatures. Uh, in fact, the uh, American alligator is found further from the uh, equator and is more able to equip and is more equipped to handle uh, cooler com conditions than any other crocodilian. Uh, when the water starts to freeze, they go into like a hibernation period. It's called bromation. It's similar to hibernating, where they just stick their noses up to the surface and that allows them to breathe uh, while it ices over. So that's why they are the furthest north of the crocodilians. Okay, now we're moving on from our symbology and we're going to carry on the crocodile and puma the theme and go straight into talking about the Everglades, which is a tropical wetland in the southern portion of the United States, in the southern portion of Florida. The Everglades is a very unique ecosystem as it's not actually found anywhere else on Earth. The system begins near Orlando with the Kissimmee River, which then flows into the vast but shallow Lake o Okeechobee. And then the water leaving the lake in the wet system becomes a slow moving uh, river that is about 60 miles wide and over 100 miles long that uh, heads toward the Florida Bay at the very tip -y, tippy tippy end of Florida. Now, so many different species call the Everglades home, including the previously mentioned Florida panthers and uh, American, American alligators. However, the Everglades is currently under a very dire threat. These. For the record, that's a Burmese python. Uh, there are relatively new invasive species to the Everglades, but they are so, so dangerous. Uh, the Florida wildlife officials uh, speculate the escape python, the escape pet pythons, uh, have been have beca begun reproducing in that environment. In fact, there are some um, beliefs that during uh, a hurricane, a breeding facility uh, was. Uh, destroyed and that let the uh, pythons that were there flee into the Evergra Everglades where they have boomed in population. Uh, in fact, there are several stories of um, extremely of extremely large pythons managing to kill alligators, full-grown alligators. Sometimes the alligators win, sometimes the snakes do. In fact, because of uh, these invasive species, the federal authorities have banned four separate species of exotic snakes, including the Burmese python, from being taken into Florida in 2012. There are a lot of other species that are invasives in the Everglades and are destroying the habitat. Um, things like, oh, uh, plants like the uh, Florida holly or the Brazilian pepper, uh, the water hyacinth, uh, also uh, things like um, you might have heard about the lionfish in well those aren't in the Everglades but it's the same it's the same idea those are infesting the tropical waters and because they're so poisonous or venomous one of the two nothing lead them and so their population just goes kaboom uh, another one that is uh, wreaking havoc on Florida are iguanas uh, despite what a lot of people think iguanas are not native to Florida they are an invasive species that have set up camp and they are here to stay in fact one of the most dangerous invasive species for bird populations is the cat the basic fuzzy sit in your lap at home and purr, domesticated cat. In fact, it's highly recommended in Florida and in other parts of the world that people should just keep their cats inside because uh, cats will eat, will kill just about any bird they can get their little grubby paws on. So the Everglades is a beautiful place to go, but they are under attack. 
Okay, let's go off of that depressing topic and go on to something a bit more uh, happy and festive, and that is the Florida Keys. Uh, they are a uh, Coral Bay archipelago located off the southern coast of Florida, and they form the southernmost portion, it's the southernmost part of the continental United States. They start about 15 miles off of uh, south, Mi south of Miami, and then they extend in a general arc south-southwest and then west to Key West, uh, the westernmost of the inhabited islands, and on to the uninhabited dry tortugas. More than 95% of the land area lies in Monroe County, but a very small portion extends northeast into Miami-Dade County. The estimated human population is roughly 73,000. Perhaps one of the best known sites, you know, besides the beaches and the beaches and the beaches and the, you know, diving and snorkeling and all that kind of fun stuff is the Seven Mile Bridge, which was one of the longest bridges when it was built. Uh, it connects Knights Key, which is part of the Marath part of the, of the city of Marathon in the Middle Keys, to Little Duck Key in the Lower Keys. And it is literally, it is a uh, piling supported concrete bridge that is, okay, it's not exactly seven miles, it's 6.79 miles, close enough. Now, why did this thing have to get built? Well, th that was because before then, it was there was a railway that connected the keys. However, the Labor Day hurricane of 1934, the road bridges, the railroad bridges, including the uh, then Seven Mile Bridge, which was a railroad, were commuted were converted to automobile roadways. Oh, and that hurricane I mentioned, the 1935 Labor Day hurricane. It was one of these. It was a uh, strong, strong hurricane, estimated at gusts of 200 miles per hour, and a storm surge of more than 17.5 feet above sea level washed over the islands. More than 400 people were killed, though some estimates place the number of deaths at more than 600. And the Labor Day hurricane was one of only four hurricanes to make landfall in the U.S as a category five since uh well since the reliable weather records being kept uh in 1950. the other storms were hurricane camille in 1969 hurricane andrew in 1992 and hurricane michael in 2018. a sad part of the history is that uh part of the work was hundreds of world war one veterans who were working on the roadway as part of the government relief program and they were housed in non-reinforced buildings in three cons in three construction camps in the upper keys originally there was it was going to be uh, a rail car that was going to take them to safety but it never made it and that caused more than 200 of the people believed to die were veterans their deaths caused a lot of anger and charges of mismanagement that led to a congressional investigation. This also ended the 23-year run on the Overseas Railway. The damaged tracks were never rebuilt, and the Overseas Highway, U.S. Highway 1, replaced the railroad as the main transportation route from Miami to Key West. And that's part of the uh, Seven Mile Bridge. Okay, since I can't seem to keep any of my topics from going into sad places, I'm going to focus instead on this cryptid that hopefully I don't make into a sad thing. Uh, this cryptid is called the skunk ape. It's an ape-like creature purported to inhabit the forests and swamps of uh, several different south southeastern United, uh, states, with most of the reports about it coming from Florida. It's named for its appearance, which is very ape-like, uh, very similar to the Sasquatch of the Pacific Northwest, but uh, the skunk ape is shorter and redder and uh, sometimes said to have like pale uh, coloration around the eyes and f or face similar to a gibbon and also there's the smell that is said to come with it uh, the skunk ape has been part of uh, folklore of the area since 
before the settler period. Uh, Sem uh, Seminole, the Native American tribe, the Seminoles, have myths that talk about a similar foul-smelling, powerful, and secretive creature which, who has a name that I'm not going to attempt to pronounce because I will screw it up, but which roughly translates to cannibal giant. Uh, reports of the skunk ape were particularly common in the 1960s and 70s. Skeptics, however, have written have said that some reports might be uh, sightings of black bears, or you know, hoaxes or misidentification with other uh, wildlife. The United States Park Service believes it to be a hoax. There's other names for it, and things like swamp cabbage man, swamp ape, stink ape, Florida Bigfoot, uh, Mayaka ape, Samp swamp squatch, swamp foot and just a bunch of different names. Uh, the skunk ape has been widely adopted across South and Central Florida as a mascot for Florida wilderness and, and the uh, rural culture. Uh, the cryptid has appeared in numerous roadside businesses and attractions. Back during the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, several Florida businesses used the skunk ape's reported foul smell giving is foul smell as giving an incentive to remain at a distance and the invasive uh, nature of it to promote social distancing. Kind of neat, don't you think? Okay, now we're moving on to the authors. As a reminder, this is not a comprehensive list. This is just ones I cherry pick that we happen to have on the shelves. Um, if you happen to know of a author from Florida, give a call out on in our comments I might give you a shout out in one of the future videos. Uh, reminder, all authors were born in, raised in, or spent a significant amount of time in Florida. Also, all of these uh, books, all these titles and authors are available at the library either as uh, traditional books or as ebooks through our uh, Libby uh, app. So here we go! Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this week's State by State, even though it did get a little depressing in there for a little while. Um, uh, remember to like, subscribe, ring the bell so you get notice of whenever we post up another video here. Uh, check out our Facebook, our Twitter, our Insta, Instagram, for those of you who didn't understand that. Next week's State is... Georgia. Welcome to Peachland. Hope you guys all have a good week. Bye.